Hey guys and gals, it's Hannah the Omaha Introvert and today we have a power pop infused video which means I am showing you additions to my collection that are strictly power pop. I will also be featuring a few power pop labels which you may or may not know so let's get into it. Really quick, a special thank you to those who participated in my little poll I did here on YouTube where I asked if you wanted me to feature 1977 or 1981 albums. So um, I've done 1979 and 1980 so far, like my favorite albums from those years. So the winner was 1977, so I am starting to pull albums from that year. I will also be getting to 1981 um, a little bit down the road. but. Stay tuned for that 1977 video. Anyway, back to the Power Pop. So the first one I want to show you is a band called The Sorrows. They are a band from New York. It's called Teenage Heartbreak. I really like the cover on that. Picture of the band on the back. Kind of jangly. They got some harmonies. Um, it's nothing that really stands out, like nothing incredibly original, but it's good. It's worth hearing. It's a debut that can stand amongst the other fantastic debuts from the era. So check out The Sorrows, and this is their album, Teenage Heartbreak. Next, I'm a fan of XTC. I've talked about them before. I had to pick up the Nonsuch reissue, beautifully done. And this is a gatefold right there. I've had this on CD for years, and I believe this is a 200 gram remaster. Yeah, out of all of their albums after Skylarking, this one might be my favorite. Lots of texture to this album, just masterfully and beautifully recorded. Uh, some of my favorite songs off of this are Wrapped in Grey, The Disappointed, Omnibus. It's just so well done. So um, yeah, if you're an XTC fan and you didn't know this was reissued, I think it was reissued late last year. So um, finally picked that one up. All right, next is a band called LMNOP. And yes, you heard me say that right. Um, this is a pretty obscure release, an obscure band. This is limited to 3,000 numbered copies, um, released in 1986. I found this at the store down in Lincoln called uh, Lincoln Vintage Vinyl, which is probably my favorite store down in Lincoln. So um, I found out about this release from John Borak's book, Shake Some Action 2.0, and I, kind of sampled it as I sampled a bunch of other albums listed in his book. So when I found this, I was like, wow, that's pretty interesting that I ran into that after just finding out about it. So um, yeah, kind of a DIY band. Uh, the leader of the group is Steven Fivit, Fivit. Like there's other musicians on here too, but he's like the mastermind of the group. And um, like I said, it's a DIY band, very lo-fi. They combine like punk and pop elements. So if you like kind of 80s, obscure power pop, definitely check this band out. And actually the lyrics aren't all sunshine and rainbows. Really love the song Constant Change on here. Element of The Merrymakers, a band from Stockholm, Sweden. Um, so I got two of their albums on CD. I got their album, No Sleep Till Famous, as well as Bubblegun. I think John Borak featured Bubblegum or Bubblegun in his book. And that's, this is the two CD extended version. The song Monument of Me is so good. Yeah, if you dig 90s power pop and you haven't heard of the Merrymakers, definitely start with these two. I actually don't know if they have any other albums beyond these. I haven't explored that, but let me know what you guys think of them. Ooh, the Shivers are next. Uh, I never expected to find even a reissue copy of this, um, but I found it down in Guest Room Records in Oklahoma City when we went on our road trip to the Austin Record Convention. Um, this is featured in John Borak's book as well. Um, that's just been a huge resource for me, an important resource for Power Pop. I showed that book in one of my last Power Pop videos anyway. Um, yeah, this is like one of the top 50 Power Pop albums. Um, that's a quote from him. They're from Milwaukee. They toured with like Iggy Pop and The Romantics. I love Jill Kosaurus' voice right there. I think this is just a collection of basically everything they did. Um, 
I know Eric Carmen praised them a lot. Like if they ever got around to recording a full album, I think he, he would have wanted to work with them on that. When I think of Power Pop, this is the sound I think of. You guys need to check this album out, The Shivers. Just the drums, like on Hold On, the drums are amazing. When I was younger, that's another exceptional song. So check out The Shivers. I can't recommend them highly enough. Also, it came with like, I've got The Shivers, this little bumper sticker thing. And it has like really good, like a featurette on the band. The packaging is pretty amazing. It comes with this booklet. I mean, pretty, pretty extensive and well done. So I recommend that. Tom Curlis and the 46%. So Tom Curlis actually reached out to me on Facebook Messenger and asked if he could send his album to me. And I said, sure. And I listened to this and I was blown away. It is like perfect pop. So I think this might be his second album or it's a lineup of the band. It's like a new lineup of the band. This was released last year, actually. If I had known about it sooner, it would have been featured in my favorite albums of 2020. Um, the buck stops here. I mean, this has like Beach Boys harmonies. It's a great listen. So check out Tom Curlis and the 46%. Next, I want to say thank you to my friend John Collier. He sent me a copy of Dwight Twilley's The Beatles album, which is all Beatles covers. And this was really, this is really hard to get actually. So um, check out the songs he covers on the back. I'm a huge Dwight Twilley fan. So I didn't even know this existed. So I appreciate you uh, making me a copy of that, John. This is really essential listening. Next, I'm gonna be doing a Gem Records Spotlight, J-E-M Records, that's the label. And I've kind of talked about their label before. Most recently, they sent me this Brian Wilson tribute album. Um, again, this comes out July 16th. So I got a very nice um, advanced listen of this. and. This is actually, this year is the 60th year anniversary of the Beach Boys. So what better way to memorialize that than to do a Brian Wilson tribute album, right? So um, on this album, you have bands like The Weaklings, The Grip Weeds, uh, Nick Pionte, The Gold Needles, Jonathan Pushkar, Richard Barone from Bongos. Um, let's see, who else do we have? The Midnight Callers, which I'm gonna feature them in a little bit. So um, very well done covers. Some of my favorites are The Warmth of the Sun by The Weaklings, Hang On to Your Ego by Nick Pionte. Pionte, sorry if I never say that right. In My Room from Richard Barone, that one is outstanding. Um, Do It Again from Midnight Callers. I mean, all of these are just so well executed. So there's that. And also on Gem, they previously sent me Jonathan Pushkar's album Straighten Up, which is his debut. Well, he has a new album out called Compositions. I really like the, the cover on that as well. Very fitting, right? So I think this one was just released this month and Jonathan is from Nashville. He's super young. He's like in his mid twenties, but he's already accomplished so, mu so much. Um, very much a Beatles fan and like definitely those influences are in his music. This is really just a storytelling album. It takes you on a journey, like different stories set to music, right? So thank you Maureen and Marty for sending those to me. Next, we're gonna feature the Midnight Callers. And I can't believe I missed this one from last year. So Matthew Street sent me this CD along with uh, some cool swag. So he sent me a whole pack of stickers for the Midnight Callers. He sent me pens, uh, this bag, which actually this record bag, it served well very well as a record bag. It was big enough, it holds a lot. Anyway, I took this to the Austin record show and used it, but yeah, there's the band's logo. So this is their album titled Red Letter Glow. And like I said, it came out last year. It's just great modern power pop with a lot of classic rock influences. So if you dig that, check out the Midnight Callers. Um, you know, it doesn't make my favorite power pop release of last year. Like it's not my number one from last year, but it's up there. It's up there. So Midnight Callers, check them out, please. Thank you, Matthew, for sending this my way. Very much appreciated. Oh, next I have to mention this reissue of Who Sell Out because you know, the Who Are My Favorite Band 
and this was recently put out. Um, I got the mono version, the mono reissue of this album. Did I need this? Yes, it's it's my favorite Who album. I already have two originals of both the stereo and mono. I've got two CD copies, including the extended deluxe edition. Um, so this is the, the gatefold mono edition and just the packaging is insanely good. Um, so yeah, 2LP Mono Deluxe Remastered Edition. It's on colored vinyl. So one is red and one is orange. Um, yeah, the second, the second disc has 13 bonus tracks. So like here's one on orange. I just took one out. It includes this poster. I'm not going to unroll it all, but you sell out, you know, with the butterfly. Kind of cool. So had to get that, you know, the being the Who fan that I am. I am, I have been saving for the, the multi-expanded CD set. I don't remember how, how many CDs are included. It's like five CDs and two seven inches. It's a bit spendier, so I'll get that down the road. But in the meantime, I had to get this mono version. It's worth it. The sound is incredible. So they really did this album right with the remaster. Um, if you don't have the album, definitely grab this new reissue. Moving on to a band called Green, and this is a fairly obscure band from Chicago. This is their album from 1986, just self-titled. And I actually snagged this off of eBay for like seven bucks total, like sealed brand new. So I ended up getting quite a deal. Green, a three-piece band. So yeah, they're power pop mixed with some punk, a lot of jangle. Um, I believe in the early lineup of this band, Jim Ellison from Material Issue was actually a member, but he got kicked out. I think I read that on RateYourMusic.com. Um, I'll have to go back and reread that, but I, I'm pretty sure one of the members of the band wrote that on there. Whether it's actually him writing that or well, whether it's someone like pulling our legs, I don't know, but that's kind of an interesting tidbit. Also, Material Issue has a new documentary in the works. I, it might be coming out this year. I don't know. I have to kind of revisit the website and see if there are any updates, but I really want to see that documentary. They have a pretty sad and interesting story, so whenever that comes out, I'm going to be seeing it. Um, yeah, Curry Your Favor on this album. I really dig that song. So Green, Chicago Band, 80s. Check them out. Bram Tchaikovsky. Got this one up in South Dakota. This is actually their last album, but it's the first one in my collection. Um, it's on Arista Records. Yeah, this is like new wave and power pop. Pretty solid. Um, Bram is actually Peter Bramall from The Motors. So if you like The Motors, I actually have one of their albums too. Um, Bram Tchaikovsky. I think I like Bram Tchaikovsky a little bit more than Motors, from what I've heard so far anyway. Next we have a band from London called The Sinceros, and I picked up two of their albums recently at Homer's Downtown. I was pretty surprised to find these because that's the first time I've seen them. So this is their first album, The Sound of Sunbathing. I like the cover on that. Um, it's pretty polished, but it's it's got some really catchy songs. It's It's new wave and power pop combined. This was released in 1979. And then I got their follow-up called Pet Rock. And actually, I like Pet Rock more than their first album. So this one came out in 1981. And I'll probably be showing this one again in my 1981 video down the road. Um, Columbia Records. Disappearing and Barcelona are probably my two favorite tracks on here. Oh, so Logan at Swellheads Network sent me three Power Pop CDs, and this was probably like two months ago, so I'm sorry it took so long for me to show these. So he sent me a Not Lame Records compilation, and it's actually their volume one. So um, Not Lame was a pretty well-respected Power Pop label starting in the 90s. And then the Newsboys, he sent me this album called Playtime. I think this one's pretty rare. Um, so Mark Dawson was in this band. Mark took over lead vocals for the grassroots later on. So there's a fun little tidbit for you. And then he sent me this album from Great Buildings. It's extra epic everything. This is actually their second album, which was shelved 
for quite some time and they finally released it in 2010. What's notable about this band is two of the members went on to form the Rembrandts, you know, in the 90s. Anyway, thank you, Logan. That was very generous. I appreciate those CDs and I am digging them. So um, next we have the Slicky Boys. This was somewhat of a blind buy for me up in South Dakota, but it was a decent price. And um, yeah, I looked them up on All Music and it sounded like they'd be up my alley. So I took a chance and it paid off. So this is their album called Cybernetic Dreams of Pie. And just look how cool they are. Like, look at the pictures of the band on the back. Yeah, man. Oops. Um, this one's released in 1983 on Twin Tone. It's a cool label. Yeah, so this is 80s power pop with some surf guitars and like a punk edge. Just digging the heck out of this. Um, it surprised me. It really surprised me. What stands out to me is just how tight the musicianship is on this album. They even do a cover of Status Quo's Pictures of Matchstick Men, which is awesome. Um, you got what it takes. That's another favorite of mine on here. Must have been a fun band to see live. Like, just very energetic. Good stuff. Slicky Boys. We're going to feature The Nerves next. Found this one for a good price um, down in Lincoln. This is a compilation called One Way Ticket. So, if you dig the beat, you're going to want to go back and check out this band first because Paul Collins, who later formed the beat, was in this band along with Peter Case and Jack Lee. Um, they also play with the Ramones pretty early on. They had a very short career, but they left a pretty memorable mark because they're the ones who did the song Hanging on the Telephone. I mean, that's the Nerves original song. Blondie later made that famous and it just like exploded, but it was the Nerves song, just so you know. <laughs> um, so this is a very worthy compilation. It's also got like demos and live material on it. It's got like their first EP on here and other stuff. So yeah, um, 70s power pop greats, the nerves. I wanna do a spotlight on Big Stir Records next. And Big Stir recently merged with Spider Pop Records. Um, last year, Spider Pop sent me a rather large music package, which was awesome. This new merge is really exciting. So I wanna just say a huge thank you to Rex and Christina who are in the band, The Armoires. And uh, they sent me their album Incognito, which was actually just released this year. And they sent me their album, hang on, I've got a bunch to show from this label. They sent me their second album, Zibildon. Uh, I apologize, I don't know how to pronounce that, Zibildoni. Yeah, great stuff. Rex and Christina are so talented. Um, yeah, their new album here, it's, it's kind of an experimental one from them. And actually this is one where um, John Borak, the author of Shake Some Action 2.0, he joins them on drums on this one. Yeah, it's like jangly sunshine pop harmonies you have to hear. I also want to do a quick little mention that um, I submitted a power pop essay to Big Stir. It's going to be featured in their upcoming issue. Um, it's just like a little power pop essay that I was asked to do and I agreed to submit that so I'm really excited I hadn't written an essay since like college like 15 years ago so that was kind of exciting for me just wanted to like toot my own horn on that but other so other bands they sent me um that I've really been digging like Spy Genius this album Man on the Sea phenomenal um Tripwire I've really enjoyed this one Brother Steve Wow, excellent harmonies, Brother Steve. All these bands, I mean, you guys really should go to their website and check them out. I'll leave a link down below to a bunch of stuff I mentioned and feature in this video. The Stan Laurels, Alice in Seconds, um, Chris Church. Chris Church is actually one of my favorite power pop uh, modern artists. So he has a new album out called Game Dirt. I also have two other um, albums he put out in the past few years. So. Um, Really just enjoy his crunchy power pop style, kind of in the vein of um, like Matthew Sweet and Cheap Trick. Excellent stuff, Chris Church. So Rex and Christina, thank you for sending me that massive music package. Next, I want to show that I got Sloan's One Chord to Another, which this is one of my favorite 90s power pop albums, hands down. 
bar none. Um, when I saw there was a vinyl reissue, of course I had to get it. Like, I just don't want it on CD. I also want it on vinyl. So, um, comes with this insert. My introduction to Sloan was actually their compilation CD. It's called A Sides Win. Um, so I got that and then I think pretty much immediately after I enjoyed that release, I bought this one, One Chord to Another on CD. And I remember just seeing the video for The Good and Everyone. Um, they're like on a runway. It's just really fun. Um, check that video out. But um, excellent 90s power pop album right here from these Canadian power poppers. Next, I want to quickly just mention Red Cross because I don't think I've mentioned them in a power pop featurette video before and I don't know why, but um, I want to kind of remedy and correct that now by showing kind of some of the things in my collection I have by them. So Red Cross formed in the late 70s in California. Um, the McDonald brothers are in this band and they were like super young when they first started out. I'm talking like maybe junior high age which is crazy. But I have their album here called Neurotica. This came out in 1987. This is the album where they first started going more in a power pop direction. Earlier on, they were definitely more punk, a little more ruckus, but um, yeah, this is a good one. I can't believe I only paid $7 at a record show I attended in Washington maybe two years ago. I thought that was a really fun find, so I had to get that. Um, some other ones. The rest of their stuff I just have on CD and I'll just show um, some of my favorites. Um, oh, this is their newest one from 2019. Yeah, this is called Beyond the Door. And then I have, these are two, probably my two favorite Red Cross albums. Phase Shifter, which this was just reissued on vinyl last year, I believe, on music on vinyl. So um, yeah, there's a vinyl reissue of that excellent album. And then Show World is my other favorite from them. Gotta have some Red Cross in your collection if you're a Power Pop fan. Um, I also have Third Eye. I, I couldn't find it in my uh, CD stack over there. I don't know what happened to it. It could be in my car. That's usually what happens if I can't find something. It means I probably listened to it in my car a few months ago and it could be in there still. Um, so yeah, Red Cross. I wanted to just kind of mention them real quick because they deserve all the kudos. Another thank you to DJ Trish. Um, she has sent me mixed CDs in the past and she just sent me a new package um, a couple weeks ago. So she sent me a mix, like a Chillax mix and a Jammin' 2021 mix. She's always spreading the love in this community. Um, so thank you, Trish. Hope you're having an awesome summer. Last thing I wanna give a shout out to this band. Um, so Dario from Radio Days. He reached out to me on Facebook Messenger and asked if he could send me his band's new album. I had previously heard a few songs of theirs on Bandcamp, so I had I had known of them like vaguely. Um, but he said they have a new album. He'd like to send it my way. I said sure, that'd be awesome. So yeah, Dario Percy, he's the vocalist and guitarist. Yeah, he sent me their new album, Radio Days, Rave On. So I literally just got this today. Um, so I haven't had time to listen to it and kind of develop a review on it, but I'm sure it's gonna be awesome. I've heard a few songs from it already. I'll leave a link down below to their band camp so you guys can check them out. But Radio Days, Italian power pop band. Thank you so much, Dario. Really looking forward to digging into this one. Okay, you guys, that's it. That's my power pop update. Um, I'm probably leaving a few out just because it's been so long since I've done a power pop update and you know things kind of get shelved away after I listen to them sometimes. Sometimes I leave them out, sometimes I shelve a few away so I, I probably have a few that have been um, forgotten about for this video. Please leave me comments below. I really like the interaction. You guys picked 1977 so I'm going to be pulling my favorite albums from the year 1977 for my next video. Keep on spinning the tunes and I'll see you next time. Bye!